What's up friends, it is Sam from DIY Huntress and today I am so stoked to show you how I created a DIY outdoor coffee table that can be used as a cooler or a fire pit. Let's get started. Check out my new swag. So pumped. So there were a couple reasons why I was so stoked about this project. First and foremost, let me just say, my family loves entertaining for holidays. Obviously that has been something that's been super difficult this year, especially because it's been so cold out. But with the seasons changing and it getting warmer outside and outdoor entertaining for our family being a thing again, I partnered up with my amazing friends at Carhartt and Guinness to create an outdoor entertainment center for my parents' backyard to help kick off our unofficial start of our outdoor entertainment season for our family, which typically starts with St. Patrick's Day. In terms of planning for this project, I knew that I really wanted to make a piece of furniture that was multifunctional. You guys know how much I love multi-purposed projects. And I also finally wanted to try my hand at making a concrete tabletop because I haven't done that yet. That being said, to get started on this project, the first thing that I did was cut melamine boards on my table saw to create the mold for my tabletop. Now, if you don't have a table saw in your workshop, you can 100% use a circular saw for a project like this. I do have a video on my channel where I have cut a melamine mold using a circular saw and I will link that in the video description for you so you can check it out. And as always, the full list of materials and dimensions and products and tools and everything that I used for this build can be found on my website by clicking on the link below this video as well. But back to the build. So after cutting my melamine pieces, I then began to attach them together by pre-drilling holes and then screwing them together with wood screws. I made sure that this mold was an inch and a quarter deep so that I could have an inch and a quarter thick tabletop. I then cut some thinner strips to create a box for the center of the table where this is going to serve as kind of like an inset for a pan later that will be the cooler and also the fire pit type attachment. And here is where things started getting a little weird for me. At first I tried to screw these together and it just wasn't working. The melamine was totally splitting so I decided to use brad nails instead. Also. The pan that I ordered for this particular project did not arrive yet, so I was kind of like blindly measuring this because I knew the concrete would need a couple of days to set. So pretty much throughout this entire process, I was just like crossing my fingers and hoping that the pan I ordered would fit later. Spoiler alert, it did, but for a while there I was worried. Now after assembling this little insert piece, I did have to kind of figure out how I was going to attach it to the melamine mold because I need to be able to remove it later. At first, again, I really wanted to screw it into the mold, but I decided to use brad nails instead. I really hope I don't regret that later. <laughs> yeah, I was pretty nervous that these things would not be able to be easily removed once the concrete was cured, but we'll get there when we get there. Now I've never done a giant concrete project before. I've obviously done a ton of resin projects before. And one of the things you do with resin projects is silicone all of the edges so that your resin does not leak out. That being said, I wanted to make sure that I got this done the right way the first time. So I actually inhaled so many videos from my dude Pete over at DIY Pete and he adds silicone to all of his edges to bevel the edges of the concrete once it cures. And because he's like a serious pro at making concrete tabletops, I did the same. And then I allowed the silicone to dry and began to cut some remesh to fit into this mold to help strengthen the concrete later once it begins to cure. So I wish I filmed this, but remesh sheets are actually pretty large and I couldn't get a full sheet in my car. So I ended up like stepping all over it in the aisles of Home Depot in order to fold it into a compact piece that would fit into my car. So just a heads up for anybody who's looking to do a project like this, you're gonna need a bigger car probably to fit a whole sheet of remesh in your car. 2021 is gonna be the year that I finally get a pickup truck. But anyway, so at this point, the mold was dry and it was time to start mixing my concrete. So I started by pouring some water into a cement mixing tub to limit the amount of dust that like flew out of this thing while I was adding my first layer of concrete. And I did end up using a 60 pound bag of concrete for this project. And I just added a little bit of concrete at a time and then added some water at a time until the consistency was kind of like thick peanut butter. It's like the only thing I could think of because I'm super food motivated. Um, but man, yeah, this was a workout. 
Since the concrete was so thick, it was definitely easiest to scoop it up with my hands and then just place it and pack it into the mold. And I packed the mold a little more than halfway full before adding in the remesh sheet that I cut earlier in the process. And once that sheet was in place, I then packed in some more concrete and made sure that it went all the way to the top of the mold. And legitimately, I used the entire bag of 60 pound concrete to the last drop. But once that mold was completely full, I then used a fun little tip that I learned from my buddy Pete, as well as my dude Glenn over at DIY Creators, where I used a sander without sandpaper to vibrate the edges of the mold and also bounce the mold up and down a couple times to release air bubbles before moving on to leveling the top with a piece of scrap wood. Sure, yeah. This is totally the technical way to stand when you do this, right? Because I was working with this thing on the floor, this part was definitely a little awkward, but essentially I just used a flat piece of wood to skim over the top of the mold and make sure that it was super, super nice and flat. This kind of feels like the most fun yoga class ever. Honestly, if I could combine my love for yoga and DIY into a project, why not? But on the real, this definitely could have been much easier if I didn't pour this concrete on the floor. But either way, it worked out just fine. Woo! Uh. <laughs> so graceful. Once I was happy with how flat the top of the mold was looking, I just took a couple of moments here to give it a really good shake one or two or a thousand more times to make sure to get rid of all of the excess air bubbles. And after that, I realized actually that I forgot to check if this mold was level before pouring concrete. So I did take some time here just to use a level, make sure that it was level and add any shims where I needed to so that it cured flat. I then covered up the concrete with some plastic just to help it cure evenly because we are having some really strange weather here right now. And then I left this thing alone for a couple of days. I talk about this a lot in my videos, but because I have a full-time job, I do end up kind of multitasking on a lot of my builds. And while that concrete top was curing for a couple of days, I did spend some time cutting all of the pieces that I needed for the base of the concrete table. And because it is an outdoor project, I wanted to use wood that would do well outdoors. So I decided to create the entire base using two by four and one by four cedar boards. I knew that I needed a heavy duty base in order to hold the weight of this concrete tabletop. So to get started, I actually began by gluing and attaching two two by fours together to create legs. And I obviously made four of these because I made a rectangular base. I then attach these legs together using stretcher pieces and I cut some short stretchers and some long stretchers. But again, if you're looking for measurements, definitely check out the post on my website. I've listed all of the measurements there to make this super easy. Also super random and I know that they sponsored this video, but legitimately this jacket from Carhartt pretty much saved my life because it was freezing outside. We actually had like the coldest week ever during this build. So Carhartt, thank you for making awesome workwear. But okay, so after feeling warm and fuzzy inside, outside, and about this build, I actually moved those smaller sections that I created using the small stretchers and the four legs to the floor where I then connected those together using the long stretcher pieces and I attached them using glue and using decking screws. I wanted to use outdoor hardware because I don't want the hardware to corrode over time. I then flipped that piece on over once those bottom two were attached and repeated the same exact thing on the other side. One other thing to note is that it's super important to actually check for square throughout this entire build because concrete is not forgiving. Like once it cures, it can't really be cut easily. So I did spend a significant amount of time throughout this entire build making sure that everything I did cut was perfectly square. And I do get asked a lot, like, how do you make sure that happens? And this is a twofold process. One, you want to make sure that your saw itself is squared. I do this pretty regularly. And I also made sure to have a carpenter square around as well. 
So after making sure that this frame was perfectly square, I actually decided to add two more supports to those longer edges of the table. And this is going to help with the decorative element that I'm adding in the next step, as well as just strengthen the entire frame itself. I also added some extra supports in the center to help support the weight of the concrete tabletop later. Once that table base was built and sturdy and I was happy with it, it was then time to move on to the part of the project where I added some decorative accents. And I did this by cutting some one by four cedar boards down to size and then gluing them and nailing them into the base in sort of like a slat wood effect looking way. I added spacers in between each board to allow for some room for some contraction and expansion because this thing is definitely going to be staying outside and I just continued this throughout the entire base. I did originally want to miter these corners, but I was actually worried that with how wet our seasons have been in the summer that they just were not going to look right and they were going to expand too much. So I did just decide to cut everything at 90 degrees and it worked out really well and actually looks really cool. But once I was done with the entire base, I then sanded it down to 220 grit and then added an outdoor finish. Okay, so at this point was when I started getting nervous because the concrete had now been drying for about three days and on day three, I removed the plastic and then allowed it to do its thing. And then I moved on to removing those melamine pieces and it was time to dry fit that tray and see if I actually did this the right way. No way, no way, no way, no way, no way, it fits. Uh -uh. Ah! I'm so excited. I was so nervous this wasn't gonna fit. It looks like it's gonna be a perfect fit. Ah. Ah. All right, steam mold. Literally cannot explain the excitement that came over me when I found out that that tray was going to fit perfectly because again, concrete is not forgiving. So once you pour it, it's so hard to make any adjustments. And I was just so stoked. Okay, so following my happy dance, I removed the rest of the melamine boards. They came off super easily. And then I began to just lightly sand the underside of this table. And I also sealed it before flipping the table over to work on the other side. This tabletop was so heavy, so I called in my brother to help me flip it over because I just didn't want to damage it or break it at this point. I would have literally been so devastated. Luckily though, this thing just popped right out of the mold and we were able to flip it over pretty easily and it looked awesome. In fact, I was so excited about it that I actually wrote it a song. Freaking out in the best way possible because this thing actually cured. I mean, like, come on, that is clearly a Grammy award winning song right there. So like, watch out. But no, really, obviously I was like so stoked. This thing looked great. I did not even have to sand it at all. In fact, I just moved along and added some concrete sealer and allowed that to cure before then installing the entire table in its final resting spot in my parents' backyard. Quick shout out to my dad for helping me lift this thing and install it because it was heavy. Luckily, because this tabletop is so heavy though, I didn't have to do anything crazy to install it. We just placed it directly on top of the table base and this thing is not moving. Now, once the table was installed, I then inserted the pan into the center of the table and lightly tapped it into place. And at this point, it was pretty much done. In hindsight, there is one little adjustment I am going to make to this project at some point. I'm going to drill some drainage holes into this tin. But other than that, it was just ready for some outdoor entertaining. To use the cooler function, I just poured some ice into the tin and then added our favorite beverages to celebrate with. And for the fire pit function, I removed that ice and those beverages added some lava rocks and also added some wood for burning. I am beyond stoked on this project for so many reasons. First and foremost, for my first concrete furniture project, this thing turned out exactly the way that I was hoping it would. And secondly, I'm just so excited to basically have a space for my family and I to celebrate some holidays outdoors. 
In typical years, St. Patrick's Day is usually spent at a parade and also eating some homemade corned beef and cabbage and Irish soda bread. But obviously with this year being different, now we can kind of make our own parade and our own celebration in my parents' backyard. And we can celebrate in style either with our beverage cooler or our fire pit. And the celebrations definitely won't stop there because this table is a table that can be used for multiple different holidays and celebrations in multiple different seasons. I really hope that you guys love this project as much as I did. I'm thinking I may want to do some more concrete projects in the future. If you would like to see that, please let me know in the comments. But in the meantime, please make sure to subscribe to my channel for more projects in the near future. It's going to be a busy year with a lot of content and I'm so excited to have you all by my side on this journey. So as always, friends, thank you so much for following along and supporting what I do and cheering me on. You guys are awesome. Until next time, friends, happy DIYing.